of you who perhaps got it a little goofed up, if you can email me or Tiffany Sweet with which child you took. We have some mystery children right now. Thank you. Thank you. We're also collecting um, dried food for Ukraine. This is um, in coordination with uh, St. Michael the Archangel Ukrainian Catholic Church in New Haven. And so that is dried um, high protein soups and oatmeals. So you can drop those off at any time um, in a bin outside the doors over on the other side of the church house. Hey, Nathan. Um, this Wednesday, uh, Connection is meeting. That's our women's group. We invite anyone to come join us, 7 o'clock. Next Sunday is um, two big things happening. We have our Christmas pageant during worship at 10 a.m., so I hope you will join us for that. It will be a wonderful, wonderful program. And then at 5.30 next Sunday, we will be gathering right outside the steps um, and singing our favorite Christmas carols together. Nathan's going to be playing the organ through the outdoor speaker, and um, this is always a, a lovely community event. We've done it. It started during COVID and was so well-received. Um, it's really a lovely evening, so we hope you will join us for that. Nathan, do you want to make an announcement? Hi. This Sunday, uh, today, <laughs> at 4 o'clock, the Shoreline Ringers will be here. They are a phenomenal uh, handbell group, as I told you about last week. Um, they're their performance is really extraordinary, what they do with the, uh, the, uh, the hand chimes and the hand bells. Uh, it's a really beautiful program. Ten dollars right at the door, and uh, you'll be treated to a, just a beautiful, beautiful uh, Christmas concert of hand bells and hand chimes. So sure hope to see you then. It's a concert not to be missed. Four o'clock today. <laughs> what day is it? Um, uh, call your attention to a few announcements in your bulletin. The nine to nine dinner groups are forming. We've got um, our longest night service next Wednesday. That is not, the service is about an hour. We always need to clarify that it doesn't go on all night long. Um, uh, but it takes place on the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, hence the name. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful service of prayer and communion and candlelight and it's a quieter time, a more reflective time. It's a great time to just kind of settle in and ground, um, acknowledge any griefs and losses we might feel at the holidays, um, and look to that coming light as the light keeps growing in our world after the solstice. So um, we invite you to join us for that. And just want to make note that our Christmas Eve services this year are at 4 o'clock and at 10 o'clock. So we hope we will see you at one of those services. Any other announcements to share? Okay. Sorry? Oh, yes. Thanks, Allison. So um, today during worship, we'll have a moment of um, thanksgiving and farewell to uh, Justin Ziegler, our youth minister. Um, he will remain uh, part of our congregation, but he's moving on in that part of his um, vocation. And uh, after worship, in coffee hour, we'll have a celebration um, with cake. So come join us um, for coffee hour as well. So let us take a deep breath, settle ourselves in the presence of God here as our worship begins with the entrance of the Bible.
you to rise to your seats or in spirit and lend your voices to this Advent hymn of hope and assurance. voices together in our prayer of invocation printed in your bulletin. As waters spring up in the desert, O oh God, so your joy springs up within us, out of surprising places, in unexpected moments we cannot anticipate, from encounters that leave us silent in awe. In this season, O oh God, Grant us vision to see beyond the trials of our lives, to rejoice at the wonders that pour from your creating grace, to embrace redemption as it comes to us, to find the peace of soul, to welcome once again the rebirth of love into our world. Amen. Each week we gather here in the loving presence, the embrace of God, and in the peace that that gives. I invite you to turn to one another and offer a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you all.
The first two candles of Advent are lit, one light for hope and one for peace. As our Advent journey continues, we light a third candle to express the joy that rises in our hearts as Christmas draws closer. Joy can surprise us. It is like an underground spring welling up within us. It is also a choice we make, an attitude we adopt. Today we open ourselves to the divine joy born this season into our world. May this light remind us of who the God of the God who comes to us in hope and joy, and may our lives now reflect that joy in every part of our living. Loving God, at the news of your coming, our hearts rejoice. In this season, we open ourselves to the joy born again in Christ's birth that abounds in the peace and hope that surrounds us, that proclaims to all creation that your salvation has come. Amen. In the life of any congregation, there come those times of parting. Those times uh, come to us as well when we bid farewell to people who have been a part of this church's life, whose gifts and passions have been so integral to our life together. So I would like to invite the Reverend Justin Ziegler to come forward and join us for a time of recognition and thanksgiving. How wonderfully, how wonderfully appropriate. <laughs> uh, Justin, we are of course saddened to hear that you will be leaving us officially as our youth minister, but as Sarah said, and as we've tried to make as clear as possible, not leaving our worshiping life as a congregation. Um, but we are excited at the same time for this new opportunity that comes to you that will be such a great vessel for all the great gifts and passion that, uh, that you have that will allow you to minister to a far wider community of people. For over five years, you have done such wonderful work with us and with our kids, 
and transformed our youth group in many ways that will continue to sort of be alive and manifest itself uh, in the years to come. But beyond that work, beyond you know, your kindness and your care for our kids, um, you have graced this worship space and this worship community with your great gift of song, with your preaching, and even beyond that, you have drawn us into the wider community, the wider Madison community, through your connections, or through your ways of connecting us to Madison Youth and Family Services, to our schools, and perhaps most importantly and most profoundly, you have called us to actively live out our open and affirming identity by being the central driving force of Madison's inaugural Pride Day festivities. So for all that and so much more, we give you thanks. Uh, you have been the grace of God to us. I know you're not going far, but we will miss your leadership desperately. Th and thank you for all that you've done. And I will now um, invite Matt Vetter to come forward and, uh, and share a few words with us as well. You look so panicked. Let's fix this real quick. Um, uh, it's to my understanding that there is a great deal that needs to happen. Um, and in the interest of time and respect for Justin, I'll try not to ramble. Um, but what I will say is that there's at least uh, 50 to 100 great stories I could tell about Justin and his time here. And in any probable regard, there's a great deal more. But I don't imagine that just one would or could do enough to kind of express or capture just how much of an impact Justin has had on me and everyone else that he's managed to interact with in this context or any other over the past uh, five years. And while banned questions in Sunday school are random, my bad, uh, Moses Youth Group Sunday Ruth Group Movie Nights might never really be the same without you. I uh, really appreciate that you found an opportunity this exciting and amazing. So at this point, all that's left to say is congratulations, good luck, and uh, thank you from every kid here. Yeah, see, I don't. Hold on. Indeed, it is hard to put into words the, way, the many, many ways that Justin has cared for that you have impacted our youth here, our families. Um, you have a very pastoral heart and um, a wonderful way of connecting um, with all of us. And uh, so we are incredibly grateful. And at the same time, it is our job now to release Justin from his role as a youth minister among us and all that that entails and to embrace him as a fellow member of this congregation. So there is a prayer in uh, your bulletin and we'd ask uh, that you, we all say it together, a prayer of blessing. We give thanks to God for the blessing of your ministry among us for the wisdom, care, and joy you have brought to our church. May God's blessing enrich your new ministry, this new journey that will celebrate your abundant gifts and call forth new expressions of compassion and care for the new communities you will serve. May the blessings we have enjoyed find rich soil along the new path you now travel. Amen. I just want to, I've tried to express um, my gratitude for this space and this family and this community. Um, thank you very much for being my family, my church family over the past few years. Um, and I'm grateful that we can continue our ministry and work together, um, that God may be known in all of God's glorious ways, um, weird odd, strange ways sometimes, um, but that God's grace and God's presence may be known to us here on the shoreline, but around the world as well. So thank you so much for traveling together. And now I would invite the children to come forward and join me up front. Coming up, 
I'm getting over a cold, so I'm wearing my mask today so that I don't give anybody my germs. But I'm glad to see you guys. Question for you. You know, over the last few weeks, we have been lighting these candles up here. <clears throat> You've seen them, do you know? And each week, we light a new candle. Come on and sit down. Each week, we've been lighting a new candle. And here we have this bluish, purplish candle. Um, and this one we called Hope. And then we have another bluish, purplish candle. And this one we called Peace. And then, what's this one? What color? It's pink, right? Surprise! This, this week is pink. And do you know what the, we call this candle? Say that again. Joy. Joy. Yes. Joy. Yeah. I have a picture here that I think is what it feels like to feel joy, right? Here's a picture. <laughs> Leaping in the air, right? So having fun, right? Can you think about times when you have felt like this, happy? Happy on, on uh, when I jumped in the pool. When you jump in the pool, that's fun. When I'm able to see my friends. Oh, when you're able to see your friends, you feel like this. Anybody else? When I jumped in the water at TG Pants. Okay, when you jumped in the water, that was fun. When do you feel joyful? When I go to the beach, I might build sandcastles. Yeah, when you build sandcastles at the beach, what a joyful thing. Do you have any thoughts when you feel joyful? I, I go to my flats and my mommy go to the beach with me and I play with my friends. Yeah, being with friends is so joyful. I went, I meet, build a snowman on Christmas. Yeah, building a snowman is joyful too, right? Uh, yeah. Um, me and my dad and Ali went on a North Pole train. And Santa was on it too, and then he gave us bells. Oh my goodness, they went on a North Pole train and Santa was on it and he gave them bells. Uh, my mommy and dad and my daddy went to the train and then they were sick, but me and Santa came down the train, but dad came down, but mom didn't go down, and, 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 and the people drive the train. Oh my goodness, all these things are so joyful. Do you have one more? Uh, my, my dad died. What? My dad. My dog. <laughs> Your dog. Your dog. Yes, dogs are so joyful, right? Well, I was thinking, you know how we just said goodbye to Justin as our youth minister? When he came, we were so happy that he, he came as our youth minister and he did so many wonderful things. And now there's a time that we have to say goodbye to him as our youth minister, but there is still joy. And it makes me think, it makes me think that um, joy is bigger than happiness and sadness. It holds both those things. Because still, even though Justin is leaving and I'm sad that he's leaving as youth minister, still when I think about Justin, I feel like this. Right? Because he's such a wonderful person and I'm so glad that he's in our lives. So there's a way that joy, we can feel joy even when things are a little bit sad. We can still feel joy because joy is bigger than both happiness and sadness. Amen. And I hope that you guys feel a lot of joy this Christmas. So now we're going to head down to Sunday school with Miss Kristen over there. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, but I bet he brought you lots of joy, right? <laughs> All right, there you go. <clears throat> What's next? That's 
That made me smile. <laughs> That's joy. <laughs> so good morning. In our reading this morning, the prophet Isaiah offers an extravagant vision of joy, as profound as any in scripture. In this passage, the prophet speaks to a community who has experienced profound loss. The devastation caused by an invading army has left them crippled by despair. Into this time of spiritual desolation, the prophet speaks, inviting them to listen as images of a wilderness transformed invites them to venture the hope that God will act to restore their life and posterity. We invite you to listen for a word of hope and joy revealed through the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and burst into flower. Let it flower with fields of asphodel, rejoicing and shouting with joy. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They shall witness the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and steady the feeble knees. Say to those who are anxious of heart, be strong, do not be afraid. Here is your God, vengeance is coming with terrible recompense. Your God is coming to give you triumph. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and torrents flow in the desert. The heat-scorched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground gushing springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a pasture, and courtyard, a courtyard for reeds and rushes. A highway shall appear there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not, not travel on it but it will become a pilgrim's way. Even fools will not stray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any wild beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with glad songs and shout of triumph. Their heads will be crowned with everlasting joy. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and suffering and weariness shall flee away. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you've ever been in a desert, if you've ever seen a desert, even pictures of it sometimes can give you this impression. One of the remarkable things about the landscape is it seems so dry and desolate and desiccated. It doesn't seem possible that there is life there. Um, During my my recent uh, travels and my sabbatical this summer, I had the opportunity of of going through a lot of volcanic landscape, which is sort of like desert accelerated, right? And the thing that was really astonishing to me was how out of this landscape that is all like dry, hot, desolate rock, somehow there are these little plants, whether they're uh, sort of aloes or even small evergreens, have somehow managed to, to shoot their roots deep enough to pull up enough water to survive in this really unforgiving uh, uh, landscape. And, and so earlier this week, I was kind of thinking about this, and, and I stumbled across uh, an article about this thousand-mile-long uh, stretch of desert along Chilean's Pacific um, Ocean coast. It's called the Atacama Desert. And it is, by some accounts, uh, the driest place on Earth. Uh, it's, it, and it lies within what, I guess, climatologists call a rain shadow, which means it gets almost no precipitation. And even, uh, even among, and in some of the higher elevations in the Atacama, uh, there's never been any recorded rainfall. But in March of 2015, 
something fairly extraordinary took place, a rare series of autumn storms, right? This is the Southern Hemisphere, so March is autumn. And in a single day, nearly a full inch of rainfall uh, landed on the Atacama. Now, an inch may not seem uh, too much to those of us from the Northeast of the United States, uh, but in that dry place, one inch amounts to the equivalent of 15 years of rainfall. The effect was absolutely extraordinary. Um, all that rain watered seeds that had laid uh, hidden for decades, and it created this explosive super bloom, uh, transforming this dry landscape into an inland sea of pinks, purples, blues, yellows, and oranges. You can Google this to see the effect in person. Um, all this life dry and dormant for years suddenly sprang into bloom as hundreds of thousands of wildflower seeds sprung up out of this dry land. Over 200 rare and never before seen species of plants sprang to life in the desert. Um, I'll try to name some of them, bear with me on the pronunciations. Pink malva flowers, giant red agara de leon, purplish pada de guanaca, uh, red Anya Nuka blooms turned the usual brown landscape into a kaleidoscope of color. Even the pictures are extraordinary. Um, not to be outdone, of course, uh, the lesser seen or the little seen uh, desert wildlife species of birds, rodents, lizards, and insects came out in droves uh, to feast on this miraculous abundance. Now, desert super blooms are rare, but they're not unheard of, apparently. They typically take place as part of a climate cycle uh, once every seven years or so as seeds that are buried deep beneath the surface await the arrival of the ephemeral moisture, usually from clouds uh, or mists uh, that, that fall to ground and burst uh, forth into life. Now, what is needed is this good soaking, right, for a desert bloom to take place. Enough rainfall to find the seeds and the bulbs in the earth and wash away the protective coating off of the seeds and allow them to sprout. So this, um, these images and this description of the Atacama Desert puts me in mind of this passage that Leanne just read from the prophet Isaiah. Um, do you have my, yep, there it is. Uh, Isaiah, and we have said this um, frequently over the course of Advent, because Advent is, is a season in the church's life that reflects the Hebrew Bible's experience and description of exile. And what, what Isaiah does here is he is taking this image of extravagant bloom, of the wilderness and the desert singing for joy, of, of creation itself blooming, bursting into new life, and the joy that is experienced through that, he's taking this sort of physical experience uh, as a way of talking to his congregation, his people in exile, about the possibility that this is going to happen to them as well, right? The physical manifestation of, of rebirth and regeneration that takes place in the desert is something that can take place in their own hearts as well. Uh, and they know the need for this, right? They've known what has happened in their past. They know that they have been robbed of their home. They have been driven away into exile, leaving behind the spoking ruins of Jerusalem. They have no expectation ever of returning. It's a common theme in the Old Testament. Uh, and what the prophet wants to do is to, uh, is to instill in this people that are living in sort of a spiritual desert that there is reason for joy. And as the Spirit Choir just sang, there will, become, there will come a time when the divine impulse will cause the shadows and the grief and the sorrow and all that loss to flee away and the people of God, like the desert, like the wilderness itself, will rejoice and sing for joy. And the question is, how does it happen? Because I think in the biblical understanding of joy, 
it can't happen because of something that we do, right? Joy is, is really tends to be elusive, right? It comes out of surprising moments. We have the capacity to create happiness for ourselves, to experience gladness out of our own, uh, out of our own initiative, our own power, perhaps. But joy is something else. Joy is something that erupts out of places that seem devoid of life, out of places of incapacity or disability, when we feel like we have nothing. Suddenly, something comes and shakes us back into life, right? Something that, that gives us a sense of, of life reborn. I think anyone who has uh, been present for the birth of a child, especially if it's their own, We'll sort of know this feeling. I, I certainly remember when our children were born, uh, and that feeling of, of being almost, almost debilitated by joy. I think fondly of those moments from time to time, right? Um, <laughs> that's what joy is, right? It's that thing that just really erupts, right? And, and we probably know this. Um, but we need to call upon it because, again, it's a, it's a, it, it comes from that place that we simply have no control over, right? It just comes when we least expect it. Um, and it looks like a desert in bloom. It feels like something that holds us, um, and that holds us in its grip and hopefully will never let us go. Um, I, was, I was obviously thinking about this. This is the third Sunday in Advent. We've lit in the joy candle. We've sung about joy. We've heard about joy. And so what I thought I would do is I would like look through uh, the books uh, in my office and uh, many of you will know there's way too many of them. Sarah will say that as well. Um, so I'm looking through the books this week and I'm trying to find you know, some reflection on joy. Uh, and you'd think after 2,000 years the Christian tradition would have something to say about this, would have an awful lot to say about this. You'd be wrong. <laughs> Uh, perhaps it's, it's more a reflection of the books I choose to have on my shelves than the larger. Um, perhaps I need to be preaching myself right here. But I was really surprised that all of these people have very little to say about joy. I found one book that had a brief reflection on joy as a theological, spiritual uh, reality and practice. Um, but it was valuable. Because what it, what it really had to say was that joy and hope, the second and third candles of the, of, the, of the Advent wreath, are kind of twinned experiences. Joy, joy does not come unless we have a really clear idea of what our deepest, most profound hope and yearning is. That thing that seems beyond our own capacity. That thing that we have to rely on something else, whether it is God or whether it is a community of people or whether it is simply the patience to allow events to unfold. But we need that hope before we actually experience what profound joy really feels like. And all of this is bound up in this, in this, this wonderful part of this passage from Isaiah about homecoming about how the, uh, the desert will bloom, the wilderness will rejoice because God is bringing us home. And this is not the eternal home. Isaiah is not talking about heaven here. He is talking about the very real experience of being restored to our full selves, to the things that we were created to be, to go marching into Zion with glad songs of joy. Zion is that term that shows up every now and then in the Bible. Um, it is sort of Jerusalem, but it is sort of the, the fullest expression of what it means to be alive as individuals, as communities, as a species, as the whole of creation. Zion encompasses that great hope that God has for all of us, for peace, joy, love, hope, for a sense of belonging, for a sense that we are created for a purpose, that there is a meaning to this existence beyond the things we do day to day, that we are held and carried and led by something greater than ourselves. Walter Brueggemann is a, is a well-known uh, scholar of the Hebrew Bible of what we call the Old Testament. 
And he has this famous phrase that he repeats uh, uh, almost unceasingly, that God's best work is done in the wilderness. That God is at God's best when everything else seems disabled. In situations that seem uh, devoid of hope, barren of life, that is where God comes alive. And it may be that as Christmas approaches, as we get ready for that, you know, to hear the great stories of joy and sing the great songs on Christmas Eve as we, as we uh, prepare to, to gather on Christmas morning at 10 o'clock right here in First Congregational Church, just to put a plug in for that. Um, but that other great experience of joy that, that hopefully we all have some recollection of, of coming down on Christmas morning to see what is there that seems to... Um, appear miraculously out of nowhere. Um, and we wonder why our parents look so tired. But as we prepare for all that, for everything that Christmas is, for all that Christmas is, right, it is important to know that that comes from something outside of ourselves, that God has seen in us something worth God's attention, something worth God's concern, something worthy of God's love. So this Christmas... The rest of this season, may the possibility of joy linger around you. Uh, May you remember those moments when you have been seized by it and look for those, those glimpses that come to us in this season of what joy really means and how joy elevates us um, out of ourselves into a larger, uh, a larger concern that, that uh, uh, for joy for all of God's creation, because that is where God's concern lies first and foremost. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Yeah.
What a beautiful entry into a time of prayer. So I invite you to settle in and ground ourselves in a moment of silence as we turn to God in prayer. Holy One, gather us in your warm and loving and joyful spirit here. Trusting in your goodness, help us to open our hearts and minds to you. May we rest here in your presence. And may we receive the joy of your love welling up within us, watering the dry and parched places within our hearts. We pray for the nourishing and healing and life-giving flow of your love to move through our lives and the lives of all those who are thirsty for healing and for wholeness. We pray for Pat, Sharon, Carol, Seymour, Dawn, Jan, Patty, and George. We lift up Nancy, Barbara, Allison, Cheryl, Suzanne, Walter, Susan, and Paul. Be with Matt, Zen, Joyce, Patty, Noreen, Aileen, Nancy, and Robert. We pray for Stephanie and Patty, Dominic, Vanessa, Stephanie, Ron and Helen, Debbie, Pauline and Betsy, the Odell family and the Blum family. We pray for Pierce, for Jeremy and Lorraine, and for Peter Schumann. We name others as well who we hold in our hearts and we lift them in your love, O oh God. We continue our prayers for hope, peace, and joy in the world, and we lift up Ukraine and all people who are caught up in war, grieving, wounded, fleeing, fighting. Holy God, bring us to a place of peace. We pray for all the families at Christian Community Action's New Hope Housing, for whom our congregation is shopping for Christmas presents. Bless them with your hope, with your peace and joy. We give you thanks for Justin's ministry with us and especially among our youth. And we pray that the seeds he has planted among them will take root and grow in their lives. Holy God, help us to keep turning to you this Advent. Keep our hearts and minds, eyes and ears open for signs of your coming near to be with us in deep and saving love. May we be such a sign for others. We pray all this in the name of Christ and lift our voices together in the joy that Christ brings, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
friends, it is a joy to gather each week with all of you and together to offer our time, our talents, and our treasures to the work of God's love among us. There are offering plates by the doors, and we invite you to leave a financial offering or to donate online through our website. It is also a joy to watch our chalice rise uh, with your pledges. We um, are due to add a little bit. We are now at $220,000 towards our $350,000 um, stewardship goal for next year. So um, there is still time to make a pledge. There are pledge cards on um, by each door. We invite you to consider what the church means to you and make a pledge for um, for giving next year. And as always, we pray that all that we do and are here together, all that we give and offer, is blessed to God's good purposes among us. Amen. Our ascending hymn today is Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates. That's number 129 in the blue hymnal. be seized by that by that reality that in the company of others joy springs up and makes itself known to us and transforms us as well go now in peace hope love and joy above all things amen <laughs> 